Can you guys hear me? Okay, my name is Brandi Heward, H-E-A-W-A-R-D, address is on Everett Street in Camas. My husband and I are both Camas graduates and I'm a former former district employee. I'm also a third year Citizens Advisory Committee member, which is also known as a CAC. Our three children have been in the district up until the fall of 2020, which is when we made the decision to homeschool. Last summer, I discovered the, the uh, district's equity website. Some of the things on this website maybe questions the district's intentions. I was concerned about the quote on the website that said, our staff is learning to teach through the lens of the critical race theory. I have asked twice about the equity site in our CAC meetings. Every time I am told that the equity committee is in charge of it, which is led by both of the assistant superintendents. At the March 22nd school board meeting, I asked the school board to take action and advise the equity committee to remove the CRT statement, as I hope that was not the true stance of the school district. By the next week, it was removed, but then I saw two new job listings for equity coaches, one for the elementary and one for the middle school level. Parts of the job description listed are concerning. Who and how were these positions approved and how are they being funded when the budget is already in shortfall from enrollment drops? Last week on May 3rd, Monday, May 3rd, we had our monthly CAC meeting. I would encourage people to do a public records request to get the recording of that meeting as it contains valuable information that would never be explained in a public setting otherwise. Dr. Williams, the assistant superintendent, presented us with the strategic plan, the equity and anti-racism. She explained that this is the new equity plan being drafted right now, and then it would begin to be implemented in August with staff. We had a short Q&A, and I was able to directly ask Dr. Williams what the difference is between critical race theory and culturally responsive teaching, which is the newest terms the district is now using, and if they are indeed connected. At the end of her roundabout ex explanation, she said, quote, I think they complement each other well, end quote. Critical race theory, no matter how it is worded, is teaching children racism. It is teaching children to judge their peers and their own abilities based on their skin color, not by character or anything else, and this is wrong. CRT has been banned in several states, including our neighboring state of Idaho, but now our Washington governor recently signed a bill mandating in our Washington schools. This is an uphill battle now more than ever. For the parents, teachers, and staff here and watching who agree this isn't right but are afraid to speak up, I see you, I hear you, and know you are not alone. I want to encourage to you, parents to use their voice right now to stand up for their children. If you are able, take your children out of the public school system. Please keep in mind that this is a business. If you don't like, just like any other business, if you don't like their business model and how they serve their customers, take your money and business elsewhere. Before your children are being drowned in ideological indoctrination and suffocated through their mass at school, I implore you to take back your power and say enough is enough. Thank you. Um, Good evening. Uh, my name is Jerry Ravano, R U B A N O. I live at 1216 Northeast 6th Avenue. I am speaking this evening on behalf of my son, Luke Romano. My findings raise significant concerns, both medically and legally, of the current mask policy in place. Masks are ineffective for the purpose claimed by the mandate, potentially harmful and only authorized for use by an emergency use authorization. All parties mandating the use of face masks are not only willfully ignoring established science but are engaging in what amounts to a whole school district clinical experimental trial. Regardless of the lack of safety and efficacy behind the decision to require a child to wear a mask, it is illegal to mandate EUA approved investigational medical therapies without informed consent. The statute granting the FDA the power to authorize a medical product of emergency use requires that the person being administered the unapproved product be advised of his or her right to refuse administration of the product. This statute further recognizes the well-settled doctrine that medical experiments or clinical research may not be performed on human subjects without the express informed consent of the individual receiving treatment. The fact that mask wearing presents a severe risk of harm to the wearer should standing alone not be required for children. 
misrepresenting the use of a mask as being intended for antimicrobial or antiviral protection and or misrepresenting masks for use as infection prevention or reduction is a deceptive practice under the Federal Trade Commission. It is clear there is no waiver of liability under deceptive practices, even under a state of emergency. As such, forcing children to wear masks or similarly forcing the use of any other non-FDA approved medical product without the child or the child's parental consent is illegal and immoral. This letter serves as an official notice that I do not consent to my son or any child in the school district to being masked. Shame on you. Daisy Thompson, I have two children. One is a senior, one is in eighth grade. We've lived here for 10 years. Up to 2020, I would say we had a great experience with Canada schools. I feel that COVID-19 was a gift. It gave us the most precious thing, time with our kids to get back to the basics to listen to them, to hear what they're learning. It also showed us that Canvas School District has failed to educate our children. The education my children have received over the last 14 months has been a joke. No accountability from students to teachers or from teachers to students. The decision to not administer the Washington State standardized test was one of self-preservation. It was not that the district had our children's best interests at heart, it was about funding. Teachers are not available during classroom hours. I'm aware of an incident that a teacher said that they were busy watching a basketball playoff game during the middle of the day and could not respond to a student until after the game. According to my eighth grader, she has spent much of her days in school watching videos in the classroom and, learn, and listening to music on her phone. Kids are being punished for playing on the playground. This is not education. There are many states that have been open and successful during this whole pandemic. We are at four days a week, and the outlook for next year has not been changed. There are plenty of information available now that shows that children are not affected by this virus, and I am very thankful that they aren't. They are just carrying the fear that is placed on them, and in many cases, not from their own parents. My child's right to fresh air does not stop at someone else's fear. It's time to remove the masks from our children's faces to allow them to have oxygen for their brain to think. Seems like it might be something of fear to, love, to allow them to think. It has become very obvious that there is an agenda being pushed in our schools and that is inser inserted teachers and government overreach in between parents and their children. Shame has been used to shut people down and masks are being used to keep people silent. Enough is enough. We are fortunate to have school choice in Washington. There are many great online options that are not pushing an agenda and have excellent curriculum that will prepare my child for the future. I will not be allowing my students to continue with the Kansas School District. My name is Kelsey Hartley. I live at 3741 Northwest 15th Avenue. I've lived in the area for about 10 years. Um, I grew up a military brat. I moved every two to three years for most of my life. This is the longest I've ever stayed anywhere. So my education experience is one, it's very transitory, right? It wasn't really to build an excellent education, but it gave me the ability to see what education is like in multiple states, especially when I was in high school. I had four different high schools that I attended. Um, so while I don't have a master's degree or a PhD, um, and I probably won't be recognized as someone who is wildly educated. I do want to say, sorry, this is a bit off, but I do want to say thank you because I know you care. I love my principals. I love my teachers. While I can't always agree with all of the teachers and all of the principals' political leanings, I have my own strong feelings about what is right and what is wrong. I see a new trend happening with the equity um, agenda. It is something I do not agree with. I believe it is motivated by a generous spirit and wanting to make life fair. But as we all know, regardless of how much money you have or what your experience is, 
Life will never be fair. It doesn't matter what race you are. It will never be fair. My concern is that I see buzzwords in the equity that sound like communism. Social justice and using Black Lives Matter as an organization that we want to follow in maybe not their activities, but some of their ideals. Black Lives Matter as a name is a misnomer. If they really cared about black lives, there would be major unrest in the ghettos, places like Chicago, LA. I know that there have been horrible, abysmal things behavior of racism in our schools. I think a majority of us would call them heinous. And it breaks my heart that any child on a bus would be told they need to sit on the back of the bus because of what color skin they have. I really don't think that any of us would disagree with that. However, I also feel, sorry, about out of time, that um, it is not going to work to try to make life fair for everybody. It's impossible. Thank you for your time.